bring the whole assembly back and then the pulley is going to be in the right exact same position right okay so let's do that smart oh hi guys how are you welcome back to the next episode of the triumph tr4 restoration what i've been doing here i just watched this guy on youtube have you heard of him ellen elon elon i have some weird name yakov whatever rusty beauties he calls his channel anyways but he converted uh, tr4 from generator to an alternator and he made some adjustments to the brackets here on the side so he can uh, mount the alternator because the generator is a little bit different so thanks to him i think i have an idea how to do that for this engine because that's the next step so if you want to join me for that you're welcome to you're up for it okay so then let's get crack -a locking Okay, well, there's more parts here that we need to take care of. <laughs> All right, that's our generator. So, this is the generator that came off the car. It looks like a new generator, but we're going to switch it to an alternator, obviously. So this is how it was mounted. It had this pedestal, or whatever we want to call it, that was mounted here and then the bracket on the engine was mounted to these two locations. So now we have an alternator that has much smaller distance here and if it gets mounted directly on the bracket, you see the pulley obviously is not going to work. Actually let me show you all that on the engine. But before we go there, I want to show you here obviously the pulley needs to be switched and according to that guy on the Rusty Beauties channel, the pulley from the generator matches perfectly the pulley on the alternator. This is, by the way, a TR6 alternator. It didn't come from most motors because they didn't have it on stock, but I got it from a company called TWS Motors. So we will see how it works. It looks the same. The plug should fit. They didn't have the plug for it, but I got the plug for most motors. So now let's see if the plug for most motors is going to fit here. That's going to be at some later video though. So we have to take the pulley from here and install it on the alternator. But for now we're not going to do that because we want to take some measurements here first. You see I already know what I'm doing thanks to that guy on YouTube. <laughs> Alright, I tried to position you in such a way that you see the two pulleys on the same plane. So this is mounted here. And this is how the generator gets mounted to this and to this bracket. So I don't see it, but now you should see all three pulleys on the same plane. And I know this pulley is different, but it is obvious that when you put it like this, this pulley is much more forward than the other two. So obviously we need to shorten this pedestal, but how much? We don't know. We need to calculate that. Well, actually, it looks like it is on the same plane, but I think with the other pulley, it's going to look different. So let's take some measurements then and change the pulleys and then see what we can do. So that guy in the video made some extremely complicated calculations. I don't know why, but what we can do here is we want to have some reference between the mounting point here and the pulley and make sure that when we put the pulley on the alternator, this reference is the same. If it's not the same, then we're going to have to add washers to push it forward or remove from the pedestal, from this thing, from this thing here, to compensate if there's a difference. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this to the face of the pulley and we're going to measure this the thickness. So that's 3 inches and 120 thou. 3 and 120. So now we can remove the pulley from here. And if we're lucky, it should fit here. Let's check that. I don't know why, but I'm a little bit pessimistic about that because this looks like it is much bigger diameter nut than that one. 
Mhm. Okay. I don't know. Okay, you see the difference between something sitting 60 years and something sitting there for a few months. Okay, I'm still gonna be optimistic. Okay, it actually worked. <coughs> yeah, I don't think we are so lucky. Huh, 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 huh. So what are we gonna do here? Yep, that doesn't work here. Well, that's not a big deal. I mean, I can machine it, but this is tapered, isn't it? So it's 668 on this side. And 668 on this side as well. So it's not tapered. That's fine. So we can machine this, but then I have to cut the wood roof key and I don't have good way to cut this channel 591. So we need to Machine it out to 668. Well, I guess we're gonna have to do that. There's no choice because You see this is for a much different belt in the first place and then the diameter of the pool is different Well, the alternator is gonna spin a little bit slower with this uh, Pulley, but it works. It works well for TR4. I guess we're not gonna delete completely the wood roof key channel so then I'm gonna have to go with uh, file and make it deeper. I don't have another way. Okay, let me set myself up on the lathe and I'll bring you back. I know this end of the shop is a little bit dark, but anyway. So I have a little problem here. My chuck is not big enough for this pulley. Even if I put the, the other jaws, they don't open that much. So I have to grab it in a different way. And uh, I'm thinking I can grab it here like this but this surface here is uh, not machined so i'm gonna have to machine it and for that i have to hold it somewhere in the middle so i made this uh, sleeve that goes in here and then i can put a bolt through it and now i can hold it by the sleeve and just the tension of the chuck on the sleeve is supposed to hold my bolt <laughs> but we will see if that's the case. I'm just gonna tighten it a lot. <coughs> the whole pulley is not very true, especially the rear end. So the center of the pulley runs pretty true where the belt runs, but the outside they didn't even care. <coughs> Am I on your way? <laughs> A little bit more. This whole casting is so bad. Like if you see here how thick this side is and Look at this, how thin on this side is. I don't know. So that should be good enough now. So we can hold it on this side. If we can take the bushing out now. Oh yeah. Wow, well, I made it so tight. But now we should be able to hold it like this. Yep. Okay, so that should be it. So let's test it on the alternator. 
<laughs> yes. Wow. It's a little bit looser than what I wanted it to be. But it's fine. So now we have to make the channel for the wood roof key bigger. Because right now, sure, it's not going to fit. Hmm. Let's try. Huh. It actually still fits. You know what? That's how we're gonna leave it. We're gonna put the cooling fan. Okay. With the wood roof key there. I think this channel is still deep enough because this wood roof key sticks out very little. So I think we're gonna be fine here, you know? <laughs> That's actually perfect. Okay, so now let's find out the distance from this surface of the pulley to this and see if it is still, what did we write down here? 3120. It's 3315. So 200 tau, 195 more than before. So we need to bring it back in. So, so as it is right now, it's going to stick 195 tau out. So we need to bring it back in. So to bring it back in, we're going to modify this. We're going to shorten this by 200 tau or 195 and we should be golden so let's see how much that is zero it here and then we go to negative 195 right there this should be where we're gonna do it It's not that precise to make it super accurate, so I'm okay with that. There you go. So let's go turn it on the light. I don't know what happened here, but it's been brazed, but it held the generator, so should be fine. I hope we have enough depth now here. How deep is this thing? How deep is your love? It's deep enough. Okay, so now... Okay, so now in theory, everything here should, should line up. Like visually, it lines up perfect, but we will see about that. Now the problem is here, the rear end, how to mount it. I can run a boat from here to here, but that's not the point. Here, this boat in the back, normally it's just a guide. This is what holds it in the position. And this boat in the back is just a guide for the pivot. It goes through this bushing, which is not mounted on the alternator and it, it can actually move back and forth. You can hammer it back and forth. So the idea is that with the boat, you compress the bushing in place, but you allow the alternator to slide on the bushing and to find its location because otherwise it might uh, crack. So that's one problem that we need to figure out how to solve. Ideally, it should be a long boat. Well, that fits through here. Okay, this one doesn't fit, but whatever. We find something else then. A long boat that fits through here and somehow it gets secured here too. If we find a deep nut like this, so instead of this nut, we have a deep nut, like long nut like this, that can tighten here, and then we run another bolt through here that bolts into this nut. So we're gonna have to figure out this problem, and the other problem is the tensioner, because now the tensioner is on this side. So 
actually let me bring the belt and put it on and see how far from the engine this is going to go because we need a special tensioner for here. Maybe the original is going to match. <coughs> Oops. Wow, that's pretty tight. Huh. How come it is so tight? That's a problem. This is a huge belt. I don't think this is the correct belt for here. I don't know. It says tier 2, 3, 4 and 4A. Huh. So this is the old one which also didn't look to be correct to me. Actually, it was slipping a lot. And I guess because it's not wide enough, I can see now, and it's not touching here on the sides, it's touching only here at the bottom of the pulleys. So this is not correct for sure. I might be able to put it, but it's going to be super tight. And I don't think it was going to fit even with the generator. Okay. Well, it fits and it gives us some adjustment even. But I didn't expect it to be that wide here, but it says clearly here, it says TR2, TR3, TR3A, TR4, TR4A, doesn't work for TR3B. <laughs> Anyways, I think it's going to work like that and it looks pretty straight to me. Yeah, you see, it looks pretty straight. So in this case, I guess this is going to work. Here's the old tensioner, which I guess it's going to work. If it goes like this, we're going to have to straighten it a little bit. I don't know why it is so bent. Now, I have the feeling that this car was in an accident. So there's damage on the body on this side. This plate was bent. This mount was broken and braced. Uh, what else? There were multiple things here on this side of the engine that are not correct. Also, this tensioner is bed, bent. No, that's not how it goes. That's how it goes. Yeah, I think that's going to work. It was extended because of that other belt. So let me remove this. Okay. We're going to have to make a cut here, like a V-cut, and turn it a little bit so it can go around this. Yeah, I remember that guy on YouTube, he also did something like that, that Rusty Beauties guy. Anyway, so let me think about how we're going to do the mounting point and we're going to go from there. There you go. Don't worry, we're going to make it work. Okay, so here's my contraption. So what I did is this original nut from here, I machined it on one side a little bit, so it is a little bit narrower because I need the threads on this side of the bolt, whatever that is. I needed these threads here to be longer. Okay. Then I took this, uh, whatever, long nut, and I drilled it on one side, and I made threads that match here. These are metric threads. These are imperial, so <laughs> this is uh, half an inch, 20, this is, I believe, eight millimeters. So it's a unique nut. <laughs> if they lose it, they will never be able to find another one. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I made this. I don't know where it came from, but it's metric also, and it has a taper here, but I machined it. So now it goes all the way and it can tighten into this thing all the way. So now here, we can mount out our alternator like this, as before. OK, 
Okay, so now you can see that there's just a little gap here between the bushing and the thing because I moved it. So now we can put a washer there in this gap. On this side we can put this spacer that I made and you can see that there's a little bit of a play here. But this arm here is flexible. That's the whole point why I wanted to make the bolt long because I didn't want to rely on this arm because if we relied on this arm, doesn't matter how big bolt we put here, if it was ending here, it was gonna flex this arm. Now this way, it's gonna be solid. This is 19 millimeters. <laughs> Don't tell anyone we're using metric stuff here. So now when we tighten this, that should give us a pretty solid base here for the rear end of the alternator. It's perfect. And now you see the bushing is not spinning. The alternator is spinning around the bushing. Yeah. Okay, so this is perfect. Now, you know what we're gonna do? I'm not gonna do the tensioner yet. Not because I can't, because I don't have the time. Because it turns out uh, Chef Tash is gonna come and help me tomorrow afternoon to install the engine and the transmission in the car. So I have to prep for that. So I still have to install the new solenoid on the transmission and make sure that it works. We have to do the clutch related stuff in the front of the transmission. We have to clean the engine bay and we have to remove the exhaust, at least the downpipe from the front because that was in our way when we were taking the engine out. And then we're gonna put the transmission and the engine together and we're gonna drop them in the engine bay as a one unit. But uh, we have a lot of work before that. So we're gonna leave that for later. I'm even gonna remove the alternator now. We know what we're doing here, so let's get crack -a on something else because we don't have much time. Okay, so we have the transmission again on the testing rig and we need the clutch-related components here like the shaft, the fork, the release bearing, the, there's bushings here, so we're gonna do that a little bit later. First, let's replace the solenoid because if you remember, we tested the transmission before, we tested the overdrive and it worked when we did this manually, but the solenoid wasn't engaging. So we got a new solenoid from Moss Motors, parts number 145722, and we're gonna replace that comes with the plunger and uh, even a boot here because this boot is ripped. So let's try to replace it without removing the arm from here because this arm operates the operating valve inside and depending on how you attach it here you have different settings. We know that it works as it is that's why we're gonna try not to move it. Uh, might not work a little bit more actually yeah came out good so this boot get comes from above like this so you see you can push the boot through yep perfect now can we attach it Yay, that's perfect, actually. Okay. Now let's see if it is gonna operate. So I'm gonna put power here and ground here. Yeah. Works if I turn on the power source. Wow, that's interesting. Anywhere I touch, it works. Can you touch it? <laughs> okay, so now let's power up the rig and see if it is if this movement is enough to engage the overdrive. 
Okay. So now, let me put it in fourth gear. There you go. That's fourth gear. Put power here. Magic! Well, the boot, the boot is pulling it back up. <laughs> it should stay somewhere there, but doesn't matter. This hole here is backlash. It engages only at the end, like this. You can hear the difference in how it operates, right? We don't need to put stickers again and do all that. Well, that draws a lot of power. I, I just got electrocuted here. So that's the reason why it goes through a relay. Okay, well, in this case, we are ready with the rear end here. We tested these switches before. We know that they work well. They go in and out in third and fourth gear. So there's no point of testing them now again. I put it in neutral again. And uh, yeah, the, the actual wiring I'm gonna do inside the car. So we're done here. Let's do the clutch part. All right, so here, first of all, we have to replace the bushings. So here and here you have bushings because when this shaft goes, this is the shaft that holds the fork, that holds the release bearing. <laughs> so when we put this shaft in, if we come on this side, we can see here very little play. You see, it has a play inside here. It shouldn't have any. That affects how our clutch operates, creates backlash. So we have to replace this bushing. The other side is better, but we're gonna change that as well. We have new bushings here. So we're gonna take a socket. I don't know if all socket sets are the same, but mine, 5 8 socket, is just probably 10 tau smaller than the outer diameter of the bushing, which is perfect, because what we can do is put it there, and just hammer the bushing out. There you go. You see how it fits with just a little play. So that's the old bushing which goes to the garbage. And we're gonna install the new one the same way. I used to press them in, but it's hard to hold the whole transmission up and turns out it's not needed, so. Okay, that's a soft hammer, so we don't dent it at the end. And now we can do the same here. Hmm. This one, for whatever reason, has a slot here. Never seen that. There's nothing on the shaft for that. Maybe there's a bolt there to hold the bushing. I don't know. But you see this? Huh. Or maybe there used to be a slot on the shaft that this bolt goes through and now the shaft can't come out. I don't know. Anyways, we don't have anything like that here. So, we're gonna put the regular bushing. So the shaft doesn't come out all the way. So I'm gonna push the bushing a little bit further in, like a quarter inch or something, because it might wear a ridge here, which we don't want to. We want the whole bushing to be on the shaft. Okay, that should be good. Absolutely no play now. So we are good with that. 
Now here on the shaft, we need to install this fork. So this fork is to operate the release bearing, which is on the carrier. So we're gonna, we're gonna have to replace the release bearing as well. But for now, I'm just gonna put it here for educational reasons. And this fork moves the carrier with the bearing back and forth. And of course, the fork is attached to the shaft there, and that's how we operate our clutch. As you can see here, this fork has two flat spots. That's how it should be, because that's how it goes here. But the problem is that also these two pins, they were a flat spot as well from pushing on the bearing. So the more they are worn, the more backlash you have here inside the channel, you know? So what some people do is they turn them 90 degrees, but they're super cheap and we got them. So we're gonna replace them here and then we're gonna install the fork on the shaft. Here we have the new ones, 596075 is the part number. All right brand new okay so now this fork goes like this on the shaft and then it gets attached with a pin here so this is our old pin which doesn't look bad but if i'm not sure if it is the original or upgraded so i'm gonna change it just in case because the original very often from the force it snaps and when it snaps your fork is not attached to the shaft anymore and it just spins on the shaft and you press on the clutch pedal but nothing happens because the fork is just staying where it is or what also happens sometimes is it snaps but it's still inside and now you have a lot of backlash here so you have a lot of backlash on the pedal it still operates the clutch but you don't have enough push sometimes to disengage it completely. So that's why what they sell is this heavy duty pin, which is part number 596055 from most motors. So that's what we're gonna use. What some people do also is they, they drill a hole here and they run a second pin or a bolt or whatever to make it uh, more secure. I find that with these pins, the hardened ones, I don't have a need to do any, anything extra. So what you do is you assemble it and then through this hole on the pin, you run a piece of wire and tie it up around the shaft so it doesn't come loose. Okay, we're gonna put very little grease here on this surface now needs to be nice and clean there. It needs to be very little lubricated, especially with this bronze carrier. It already provides bearing surface there, so it doesn't need to be crazy lubricated there. So it slides nice and easy. Very little here in the bushings as well, but as, uh, again, the bronze is a bearing on its own, so. And now we can put the shaft through. The fork, now the fork of course goes with the flat parts forward, so like this. And the pins that we just replaced need to fall into this channel of course of the carrier. like this and now we need to find the hole here for the pin where is the hole 
Is there a hole there? I have the feeling it's right here, but... There you go. Make sure that everything operates perfectly. That's interesting. Never seen that before. On other transmissions, you're able to push the fork far enough to take out the bearing. But here, before you're able to take out the bearing, the pin hits this bolt here at the back the bolt for this cover. It doesn't affect our operation here, but it is, if you need to change the bearing, you have to remove the pin. Well, now it's a new bearing, so it doesn't need to be changed anytime soon. And so just a piece of wire here. Transmission completed. Okay, so we have the engine off the stand. Now we have it on this cart where we're gonna assemble it with the transmission. But before that, we need to deal with some stuff here in the back. So let me show you. So first of all, we need to put a plug here at the end of the camshaft because otherwise our oil is gonna start leaking from there. And this is the core plug. 328-375 core plug cam rear of block. It is a dome plug and it goes right there. So I believe it's pretty loose and it goes easy. You see how easy it goes? But now we have to make it tight. So there's a shoulder there I didn't show you, but there's a shoulder so you have to go all the way in. And once you're all the way in, you take a half inch or 9 16 socket and you give it a few gentle taps here in the middle. And when you push it in in the middle, because it's domed, it tries to expand the perimeter and that's how it seals around. So that's how you do it. Really gentle. <laughs> Even more gentle than that. Wow. There you go. So now it's not going anywhere. So that was the one thing. The next thing is now we have to put a bushing here inside the crankshaft before we forget. We have a new bushing because the old one was fitting well here, but it was loose on the end of the transmission. Here it is. Pilot bushing 330370. Okay, so we're going to put a little bit of grease here a little bit inside. Now we can put it on. We shouldn't forget that because if we put the flywheel without it, then we have to take the flywheel out. Well, no, it created pressure behind. I thought there was a spring or something until I removed my finger and then I felt the air coming out. Okay, now unfortunately I have to undo this bolt. This is gonna be in the way for my flywheel. So I removed this from here, I attached it up there, and now we can install our flywheel. And here on the bolts, we have tub washers, 837575. These are the tub washers, the new ones. And we have a dowel here. Shouldn't forget that. And because of this dowel, there's only one way to attach it. You can't turn it around. I'm gonna put two bolts for now without the tub washer so I can push it in. Now we can take it out and put our tub washers. They have the corners pre-bent, which is a great idea. Now we have to torque them. I'm gonna go check what the torque spec is. Well, it turns out it's 46 foot pounds. So not that much. I'm just putting this breaker bar on the front nut so I can torque it from here. 
hopefully it's not gonna move on me. There's nobody there to help me hold it, but uh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, it's moving the whole engine. And now I can install our clutch. So we have a brand new AP brand clutch, part number 591000. The old one is not too bad, but you can see the difference, yeah? So there's still life in this one, but there's no point of putting it back in when it's halfway out. I'm gonna put the new one. First, we're gonna clean the flywheel here. This is paint thinner. I know I spelled it wrong. Okay, then the clutch has a direction. Sometimes both sides are marked, sometimes only one. This one says right here, gearbox side. Sometimes on the other side, somewhere it says flywheel side but on this one doesn't. So this is the gearbox side. So that's how it goes. We have this alignment tool. You can buy it also from any supplier. So this end of the tool needs to go inside the bushing there to make sure that the clutch is aligned. And that's how it goes. I'm gonna take out the bolts. We're gonna clean the pressure plate too. They're dowels, so to guide it nicely. This is where the release bearing pushes, so these surfaces need to be nice and smooth, because if they're not, then you have this, you know, sticky clutch sometimes, because these surfaces develop slots here, also your release bearing develops slot and the slots like catch to each other. So you need to make sure that this is nice and smooth here, which it is. So I'm gonna make sure that the dowel fits well. A little bit at the time, a little bit here, a little bit there. Okay, and now let's find what the torque is. Oh, the torque is 20 foot pounds. So. Now we can pull out the two and we are ready to put the transmission on. And for the transmission, we need to make sure that we have these dowels here. They center the input shaft with the crankshaft. So don't underestimate them. I used to underestimate them and Chef Tash kept telling me they are important. And yes, I agree now with him. Don't tell him, but I agree with him now. <laughs> okay. And with that, this assembly is ready to go inside the engine bay. However, the engine bay is not ready for the assembly. This is what I mean, let's go check it. So you see here, it is pretty greasy. So what I'm gonna do tomorrow, because this video is gonna end here, but what I'm gonna do tomorrow is I'm gonna clean it up nicely. I'm gonna degrease the frame wherever I can. We're gonna wipe it, we're gonna make it nice. We have to straighten that shaft over there because I bent it. So that's gonna happen tomorrow in the morning. 
And in the afternoon, Chef Tash promised to show up and he's gonna help me to put the engine inside together with the transmission. Then we're gonna continue assembling it because we still have to assemble it. I just got a call from the machine shop. The head is ready, but there's a snowstorm outside. I don't know if you see, but it's snowing big time. So I'm not going anywhere. I'm gonna go another day to pick it up. All right, so we put this away and I already moved the car a little bit so I can have a better access here. So I can clean it up nicely and get it ready for this baby to go inside this baby. Normally babies come out, right? But we're gonna be putting babies in. <laughs> All right, so thanks for watching, for commenting, for subscribing, for sharing, for supporting and for everything that you do for me guys this is really appreciated so thank you very much so have a great day or evening or whatever it is for me it's evening so i'm gonna do a little bit more work here like this yeah that's what i'm gonna be doing for the rest of the evening <laughs> so once again thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one Bye.